Now, notice that this is not an alkyl aryl ether. Earlier we were talking about alkyl aryl ethers. This would be an alkyl aryl ether. An alkyl aryl ether is when the benzene ring itself is attached to the oxygen. Okay. So this, these are things that we don't want to get confused with each other. Remember, we saw how we could make these using that Williamson ether, ether synthesis. But this is a different thing, because now the oxygen is connected to the benzylic carbon. In this case, there is, there is no benzylic carbon. There was no benzylic carbon for the alkyl aryl ethers, because there was no carbon directly connected to the benzene. So this does not do the, this reaction, because it doesn't have that reactive benzylic carbon. It's only when we have this reactive benzylic carbon. The name of this reaction is, in, in, the, in the lower, um the oxygen-carbon bond, it's more reluctant to break that, correct? The one I just erased? Yes. Sorry, what was your point about this? It just, it, it's more this reluctant, bond? yeah. Yeah, there's nothing, there's not, it's not particularly easy to break this bond, that's right. We're not really going to explain that, we're just going to memorize that. Uh, but it kind of makes sense that you can do a reaction here that you can't do here, because this has a benzylic carbon, and we have kind of learned that benzylic carbons have extra reactivity. But for the most part, we'll just memorize that this is the starting material for this reaction. This is called hydrogenolysis. That's a very logical name, hydrogenolysis, because lysis means breaking. I think we spent a lot of time talking about hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is breaking with water. We saw how we could break bonds with water, but this is hydrogenolysis because we're breaking this bond with hydrogen. And again, hydrogenolysis, this reaction only works on a benzylic ether. So we can't do hydrogenolysis here. Why not? Because this is not a benzylic ether, because the oxygen is not on the benzylic carbon. It's on this carbon over here. So this can't do hydrogenolysis either, only when you have a benzylic ether. What would that carbon be referred to as? This one over here? I don't have any cool name for that. <laughs> Why doesn't it have a cool name? Because it doesn't have any special reactivity. We need a cool name for this because it has special reactivity. Let's think about this starting material. Right. Now what the chemist wants to do here, we have a chemist who wants to put an alcohol group on this double bond. The chemist wants to put an alcohol group at this carbon. They want to put an alcohol group here. If you think back to the very first term, that would be an anti-Markovnikov addition of OH, to put the alcohol group on the less substituted carbon. Uh, and back in the first term, you learned how you could do hydroboration oxidation in order to do that. You could use BH3 and hydrogen peroxide to put an OH group over here. So that's a reaction you learned in the first term for creating an alcohol on the less substituted carbon. However, the chemist has a difficulty because it turns out that this alcohol group over here has a tendency to attack BH3. 
they want the BH3 to get attacked by this double bond, but they also want to have this alcohol group in here, but that would attend, uh, 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 tend to attack the BH3. You can see why that is, because this is nucleophilic, and the boron is electrophilic. So that would be a competing reaction. So what they need to do is protect this hydroxy group. They need to protect this group so that it doesn't uh, attack the boron. So what they're going to do is turn it into a ether, because ethers are less reactive. They're going to turn this into an ether. Well, how are they going to do that? Well, notice here that they're using uh, a base. This is not a very strong base, but this is acidic enough that it's going to get deprotonated. So this base is going to deprotonate this. Now, why is that shown under the arrow? No special reason. Okay. Just uh, something we have to get used to. That they sometimes measure the reagents on both sides. So the base would deprotonate this oxygen. And what, what exactly is uh, it's uh, nitrogen attached to three ethyls? That's right. Okay. A nitrogen attached to three ethyls. ET is just an abbreviation for ethyl. Okay. And now we're going to do an SN2 on this carbon. Notice this is a carbon with a good leaving group. So this is the reaction we've been learning about, how we can take a phenol and deprotonate it and then do an SN2. You see how this would be what we would end up with here. The nucleophile would attack this carbon. And we do an SN2. And now we have an ether here. Okay. Now, this, we don't need to worry about this attacking the boron as much. And the reason is, or one reason is, this doesn't have a hydrogen anymore. It doesn't want to attack anymore because that would give it a positive charge, which it couldn't get rid of because it can't deprotonate. That's one reason why this is not as reactive anymore. Now that this doesn't have a hydrogen, if it attacked the boron, it would end up with a positive charge that it can't deprotonate and get rid of. Mm -hmm. Remember that we started with phenol that does have a hydrogen. If that had attacked the boron, um, then it could get rid of the positive charge by deprotonating. So ethers are less reactive than alcohols because alcohols can deprotonate after they attack and ethers can't. So an ether is a way to protect an alcohol. Well, now we can do what we wanted to do all along. Now we can throw in the, uh, these reagents. Mm -hmm. And remember that if we remember from the earlier term, we'll see that these are an anti markovnikov way of doing a hydroxylation on a double bond. They're simply going to put a double bond on the less substituted carbon here. And this is really something that just has to be memorized, huh? This reaction here? That's right. This is a reaction you saw, I think, in your very first term. Um, maybe it's good to remind you of that because your final is cumulative, right? It's covering the whole course. So, uh, so this you see that boral hydrate, is that what it is? This is, uh, this is what's called, actually, borohydride would be BH4. B, okay, so this, this is, uh, you could call this borane, borane but okay. let's just call it BH3. BH, when you see that, you're going to have an anti makarnikov addition of an alkene. When you see these, this reagents together, yeah. the ultimate product is that you end up putting an alcohol group on the less substituted carbon. That's which, right. Which in this case is the terminal carbon. That's right. Um, and there is a mechanism for that, but at this, at this late date, we won't worry about the mechanism. We're simply going to memorize that this is going to put it on the anti markovnikov carbon. So you need two steps to do that hydroxylation. You just have to have memorized that these are the steps. And we don't need to worry, as I said, about this ether attacking the boring, because ethers are not as nucleophilic as alcohols because they can't deprotonate. However, there's one big problem here. The problem is we don't want to have this great big um, CH2 phenyl group here. We want to go back to, um, to having a uh, phenol over here. However, we just learned about a nifty way to chop off this little group over here. How can we chop this off and get back to the phenol? Do you remember what was the reaction we just talked about that could cleave this bond? Uh, um, the palladium reaction? That hydrogenolysis reaction. Now, what do we need for our hydrogenolysis? We need a benzylic ether. Well, notice that we cleverly made this a benzylic ether by, attacking, by attaching a benzene ring over here. And when we attached this little group, we attached a CH2 group with a benzene. Mm -hmm. So this is the benzylic carbon over here. Mm -hmm. 
course, there's no benzylic carbon over here, but we've inserted a benzylic carbon over here by putting in a CH2 attached to a benzene. I didn't write out the whole benzene for space, but pH stands for, so this was actually a very clever trick that when they made the benzene, they purposely made it a, ben uh, sorry, when they made the ether, they purposely made it a benzylic ether because they know that they have a good way of undoing the benzylic ether. So we would have the H2 uh, PDC, is that what it is? That's correct. And let's draw what our final products would be after step four. That's just an application of the hydrogenolysis we already learned about. And then it, it's, um, yeah, let's go, go ahead and draw the other product too. 